I'm excited. Today on Crooked Mustache, we have this, the brand new 2021 Toyota Sienna Limited. And I'm going to review it and show you what it has to offer the family that's ready to ditch the SUV life and go for the van life. I've borrowed this Sienna from Toyota of Hollywood. They are the number one dealer in volume in the Southeast, and they have an extensive lineup of new and used cars. Everything from previous generation Corollas all the way up to Porsches, and there's an 812 Superfast in their inventory. If you're looking for your next car, be sure to reach out to Sandra Molina at Toyota of Hollywood. Link in the video description. Now, first a quick overview. The Sienna was introduced in 1997 as the successor to the much-loved mid-engine Previa, the Starship Enterprise of its day. Now, the Sienna was first introduced with a V6 engine, much to my surprise, and remained that way until 2011 when a four-cylinder was brought into the mix as the standard option. Also, it spent almost 15 years as the only all-wheel drive option for minivans on the market, an interesting tidbit should you find yourself spinning the clock back a few years in search of the minivan for you. Now that brings us to today, where the Sienna comes with near as makes no difference 250 horsepower from its hybrid powertrain wrapped up in this people carrier package. Now let's head inside and see what this vehicle has to offer you. Now that we're inside, starting with the driver's seat, the driver's seat feels more like a command center on a Starship. Honestly, there, there's controls for everything. On the steering wheel, you have control of pretty much anything in the vehicle. You've got your radio and nav controls, cruise control, lane keep assist, auto cruise, everything is set on the steering wheel, which controls the center screen in between the two dials. On the left, you've got actually your hybrid dial controlling, telling you when the, th the system is charging, when it's in eco mode and when it's in power mode. And also you've got your speedo on the right. This is a CVT transmission, so there's no uh, tachometer to go along with it. Over here in the middle, you've got the main screen, which it's okay. I would have preferred to have seen smaller bezels if they were going to keep the screen this, this uh, size or gone with a larger screen for more viewable space. Again, to have those smaller bezels. Uh, the fact that there are bezels, I'm glad that they actually use them to have physical buttons. You guys know how much I like having physical buttons in today's day and age rather than just a giant canvas of, of a black plastic touchscreen. And below that, you've got your AC controls and you've got a knob. For... You've got a button for your temperature, a button for your passenger's temperature. And these buttons down, down here to control where the air hitting you comes from, where it goes to and how hard it blows. <laughs> You've also got here your heated and on the limited and platinum your ventilated seat controls. I would have liked to have seen ventilated seats as a standard option on the LE and XLE as well, but if you're going to want to go for the full kit and caboodle, you're going to have to get at least the limited or the platinum if you want the ventilated seats. Now below that, it just keeps going. Down here, you've got the USB interface for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There's a Qi charger built in right here to keep your phone topped up. Cup holders galore, there's two up here, two more in this hidden compartment. Tons of cubby space here in the middle. I mean, you know, you could put a bag there, um, other stuff, you could, you know, hold hands. It's a lot of space. Going down, you've got a gargantuan pocket here in the middle where you can keep pretty much anything um, hidden away and it opens with the touch of a button. As far as USB connectivity, you've got your USB power port, which does connect to the main screen here for your infotainment system. You've also got a USB-A and a Type-C if you're one of the people who has realized that the new iPhones only come with Type-C connections. This has you good to go. As I mentioned, the T-Charger is up here, and here you've got a few drive mode selections, which actually are functional. There is the EV only mode. There's eco mode and then there's also power mode surprisingly enough this thing actually does have quite a bit of power in power mode but you will see it on the system where it's not charging the batteries as often ev mode keeps the car quiet you heard it just kick on as it's trying to keep the batteries topped up and then you've got your electronic parking brake so no fun for uh, anybody who's planning on doing some handbrake turns in this thing once again keeping with toyota tradition the sport mode on the shifter is mounted backwards they still believe that to shift up you should push forward and to shift back 
to shift down, you should pull back. Honestly, it would be fine if they added paddles, but this is a minivan. I don't think they're actually gonna put paddles on it. Now, you think all the controls would end there, but you've still got your overhead controls, which gives you access to the sunroof. Let's take a look. Not only that, you've got your power controls for the two doors, which is awesome, your map reading lights, and here, this was the interesting feature that I actually liked. Oh, you've got a little dome mirror to see all the passengers behind, so you can treat your kids like you're a school bus driver, keeping an eye on them. But the coolest feature that I found is actually this. So I found this out by accident. So I had the mirror in, in standard mode, and I went to turn on what I thought was the dimmer, and actually found out that they have, in the, in the mirror itself, an actual rear view camera. It's a separate camera from the, the backup cam that actually comes on when you shift the car into reverse. Now, it would I will stop and say this. Driving, it does take a little bit of getting used to because if you're the kind of person who's always been used to exactly where your mirror needs to be in relation to what you see behind you, as good as this feature is, it will take a little bit of adjustment, but I can totally see the benefit, especially at night. Oh! <gasps> It's adjustable. No way. Okay, it just infinitely became much better. You can actually adjust this so that you have your exact perception lined up. You can even put it, you can even uh, add some tilt to it. You can reduce or increase the magnification. Wow. Once you have this adjusted to your specifications so that you have the optimal angle from where you're seeing uh, out the back of the vehicle, this is awesome. This is a great safety feature to have on board. It's really incredible. Now, one last thing while we're up here. Once you've got your phone paired, you can truly enjoy the available JBL 1200 watt sound system. <laughs> It's in a minivan. What? All right, let's move on to the back seats. <laughs> so before we move on to the back seats, I just noticed this as I got out of the car. Now, normally this is a feature that I would expect only on a Range Rover or a Mercedes. One of the biggest issues I have with me, between me and wifey is that we both have very different seating positions and it's constantly an issue of moving everything back and forth into the right spot. But Toyota has given you a power tilt and, teles and telescoping wheel on your minivan. I may seem really shocked, I really am. This is Mercedes and Land Rover stuff. I'd expect this on a Range Rover. The difference is that on this, I expect it to work for pretty much the life of the vehicle. And I don't see myself having to replace this or fix it, given you know Toyota's iconic reliability. This is pretty cool. <laughs> now, growing up, I don't know about you, but for me, there was one thing guaranteed to start more Rochambeaus, races to the car, arguments and wars than anything else and that was who sat in the captain's chairs now short of having a huge family you're probably never going to put people in the third row without putting somebody in the middle row which means that if you're not the one driving this is probably where you want to sit now in this car it's no exception these captain's chairs are extremely comfortable they offer full flexibility this is keep in mind the most easy access uh, into and out of the vehicle the most flexible seating arrangement with especially these having full forward and back sliding capabilities. You've got your seat belts. You can lay in the lap of luxury as you're driven around by your chauffeur. And if your children are worried about being bored on their next trip and you get one of these, trust me, there's plenty to do. With the available 1080p flip down screen with an HDMI in, it's easy to hook up a switch, an Xbox, gaming anyone. And don't worry about powering it because there's also an available AC power port right next to it to make sure that you're covered for the entire trip. And just in case you're worried about your kids bugging you while they're playing on their little system, there's also the included headphones that come with the, with the flip down option to make sure that your children can play in complete isolation from your entertainment. 
Now, in terms of being an adult back here, it's not as cramped as you think. Once again, I'm not the, the smallest person in my family, six foot, 300 pounds, but I fit back here pretty comfortably. I wouldn't stand up, but the seat is actually in the same position I was in when I was sitting up front with more than enough leg room. With both armrests down, I'm extremely comfortable. Got access to my sunshade. There's USB ports, again, A and C for both passengers in the back. There's two cup holders there, a cup holder here, a cup holder in the side. There's plenty of places to put your refreshment. You can lay it down, and if you spring for the full kit and caboodle in the Platinum, sorry, yes, the Platinum, you actually get a full-blown ottoman that turns this captain's chair into a full recliner. On top of that, you've got your own AC controls for you and the passenger here. So, so now I'm gonna try, I'm sure you guys are gonna love this, seeing a huge dude try and squeeze in the third row of a minivan. This is not gonna be dignifying. Oh my God, I, ow, 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 oh, okay. Even with the seat quite far back, I fit. I mean, I'm not, there isn't a ton of space back here, but I do fit. Well, it was a, it was a slight chore, but in the event you do need to carry seven adults, they do fit back here. Uh, maybe six, I don't think I'd squeeze three people back here. It would get tight very fast. That said, there's not really much more, what much more worth mentioning here in the back. Um, as I mentioned for the middle passengers, there's two wireless uh, headsets that link up to the entertainment system. And back here, each passenger gets their own auxiliary port out for their own headphones uh, to link to the same system. So you could have your entire passenger compartment effectively watching the movie in complete isolation of you listening to your music up front. Now on the left, you have the volume control. On the right, if you've got if you've got two kids, they're gonna be arguing over these, or you're gonna have to get a really long USB cable to keep it from, keep wars from forming, because both USB ports are on the right side. Uh, the right side gets two cup holders, left side gets one, and each passenger gets their own AC vent, which is nice. One of the things I've always hated about, or hated when I was a kid, being the one in the third row was not having access to my own AC vent, because that meant I had to ask everybody in the front, can you please crank up the AC? I'm boiling back here. But now, if this was a sedan, we would normally say, well, you've got the 60-40 split, uh, split row seats, let's open the trunk. But since this is a minivan with a third row, it's also a disappearing third row. Let's head outside and take a look at how simple it is to put these seats away. So now in terms of folding the seats, it's about as easy as it can get. There's two major handles that take care of everything for you and you simply pull and fold. As I saw, now demonstrate. And now you've got the perfect spot to do some tailgating. You've got your power port right here plenty of space. You could carry a lot in the back of this thing. Why do people get SUVs? Now putting them back up is about as easy as taking them down. Simply grab the handle, lift, and then grab your straps. And you're all set. Let's talk about the styling of the new Sienna. Now when it comes to this, Toyota could have done the same thing that Dodge did with the Caravan. Make the outside as plain and simple as possible and focus on the interior. But like it or not, when it's parked outside your house, you're not looking at the interior, you're looking at the outside. Now, 
Toyota says that these are SUV inspired lines and I was ready to dismiss it as a marketing dribble, just something drummed up by somebody who was bored on their coffee break. But actually I do kind of see it. You have to look twice to really be 100% sure you're looking at a minivan. The way they've muscled out the rear wheel arches to give it a wider stance, the way the rear taillights blend in with those talons that come down the side, it really gives the car a presence on the road. Now in terms of actual changes, there's very few between all of the different lineups. The one that is most different is the XSE, which gives you the honeycomb grille on the front and on the rear valence, as well as losing the top rear uh, roof racks. Now in terms of the, other, uh, of, of the other vehicles in the lineup, for the front it's pretty much the same. You get this nice grille on the front that really only changes to the darker gunmetal if you go with the limited or the platinum. Now if wheels are what's going to help you decide between which Sienna you get, there's really only two options. If you want the 20 inch wheel and tire package, you're going to have to go with the XSE or the Platinum, with the XSE getting the black 20 inch wheels and the Platinum getting the Platinum 20 inch wheels. Finally, the big change is under the hood, where for the first time, the Sienna is one of two models where the entire lineup is hybrid. There is no V6 option, there is no non-hybrid option. What you get is the four-cylinder engine from the RAV4 Hybrid with a slightly different hybrid configuration with two motors for the front-wheel drive system and three motors for the four-wheel drive system with a combined output of 245 horsepower. Now that works together to give you 36 miles per gallon city highway. That's not combined, that's 36 in the city and 36 on the highway, which I guess technically is combined. Now it'll be interesting to see how the power is deployed given that it's roughly the same amount of power that you got from the previous V6 model. If I'm honest, I would have preferred a V6 variant of the hybrid rather than the four cylinder, but we'll have to see on our drive. Speaking of, so here we are, we're in the Toyota Sienna Limited. This is the four wheel drive version with the three motor hybrid system. I just realized the, the, the main significance of that rear view camera mounted into the rear view mirror is that when you flip down the screen for your rear passengers, it effectively blocks your rear view mirror. So all you have to do is switch it to that camera display and then you still have a view out the back of your car. There's a little bit of road noise, more than I would expect. For a fifty thousand dollar car. But what you have to remember is that with this thing, you're paying for equipment and space, and that is something this thing has plenty of. Now, there's no question that driving along, you know, you're driving a big vehicle. In terms of actual driving, the comfort is amazing. I mean. As much as I know that those 20 inch wheels might look better, I've got a feeling that there's a reason the Limited has the smaller wheels with more tire. Maybe that's to help the ride comfort a little bit. Sport mode. It's enough to put you in your seat, like you feel the pull. And it's very weird because I can hear the four cylinder engine but it feels like it's pulling me much harder than a four cylinder engine. There's tons of cargo space. I didn't mention it when I was actually in the back, but you can have up to 100 cubic, 100 cubic feet of cargo space if you fold the rear seats down and push the middle seats all the way forward. Let's see what the rear view, wow. That's pretty cool. So I've got the rear view, you won't see it on the camera, but I've got the rear view camera engaged up here. And it's a little disorientating because I'm not used to it, but wow, it feels so much nicer. Okay, this thing's got enough power to get out of its own way for sure. That hybrid system kicks in and the car moves. It's not a muscle car but I don't feel a lack of power at, at all, which is one of my biggest fears that I've always had about getting a minivan was simply the fact that it's just a big metal box with an engine and this fear that you're just never gonna have the power to merge into traffic, to merge onto the highway, that kind of thing. Um, here we are at about 60 miles an hour on the highway. 
tire noise is clear, but let me see if I can point out. It's not too loud. Tire noise is clear, but not deafening. Am I making my point? I gotta say that I, I feel I feel in control. I've got access to everything I could possibly need in front of me. This huge touchscreen display. I have the thing in drive, but I could easily put it in sport if I felt so, uh, if I felt like it, and it would simulate the gears in its eCVT mode. Braking feels confident. I don't feel. I don't feel worried that the car is going to keep going. So that's the 2021 Toyota Sienna Hybrid Limited. What can I say? It's it's an amazing minivan. I, it was the last car I ever expected someone to stop and grab my attention. In his words, is it available yet? When I told the guy yes, he's like, tell me where. But anyways, so what I can tell you from a simple drive in the Sienna is it's, a, it's incredibly comfortable. I I, having the RSUV to compare it to just tells me that we bought the wrong vehicle, that a minivan is the, is the one for you if you're gonna be doing traveling. In terms of power, it's there with the hybrid powertrain. The four wheel drive or front wheel drive, that's up to you. If you wanna carry seven passengers in awesome comfort with tons of equipment to keep everybody entertained and comfortable, this is definitely the vehicle for you. So that about wraps it up for us. I wanna thank Sandra Molina over at Toyota of Hollywood once again for providing us with a Sienna to review today. If you're interested in a newer used car, be sure to check out their inventory. It is truly a huge selection with over a thousand cars available in their used car inventory. If you do reach out to her for a purchase, be sure to let her know that Crooked Mustache sent you. I'm gonna leave her Instagram in the description. I'm Alfred for Crooked Mustache. We'll see you next time. Hmm? What? Oh. oh. Huh? This car is available right now? Yeah. yeah. Because I have, I have a Toyota Pacific, Chrysler Pacifica. It's a really bad car. This looks amazing. That just happened. <laughs>